Hello everyone and welcome back to Python Lessons on Code Academy. Today we'll we'll be actually finishing off the battleship project. So let's get started to by finishing it by to finish off the project. Okay. <laughs> Add a for loop that repeats the guessing and checking part of your game for four turns, like the example above. So we need to do that. Where we need to put this is just before we are allowed to uh, type in, so just before raw input, we need to put a for loop. So for turn in range 4, we need to do all of the below. Um, so, wait, ah, I lost it. Okay, let me find it. Okay, here it is. So all of this needs to be indented so it actually works. Well, I see this here. So at the beginning of each iteration, print turn, and so we need to print that, and it tells us that there, and indent everything that should be repeated. Let's see if this works. Turn three. Okay, looks like it does work. One and two. We guess one and two again. You guessed that one already, okay, that's fine. And then if we do four and four. Oh, we missed the battleship. Oh, it was actually four and three. Oh, I thought it was. Wait, is it changing each time? Hmm, okay. We don't want that to happen. So, where is it actually generating the random spot? Um, so rand, let's try and find, oh, control F doesn't work then, <laughs> rand, so, does it, is it supposed to do it random each time? Hmm, so random row and random column, where, where do we call them? Random row, random column. So, oh, those aren't supposed to be here. They're supposed to be outside. Because if we do that each time, it's not going to work. Um, yeah, that should be fine. If we have this as the code. Let's reload and put that in. Because it was changing each time. So, okay. Let it load. Control A, Control V save and submit so now if we do 2 and 4 it shouldn't actually have changed so it was, it's 1 and 3 and it was 1 and 3 so 4 and 4 1 and 4 and now let's actually do 1 and 3 on my last go and good oh print out each turn I do have that um, is it supposed to be indented? I think it is. So one and three. And it tells me which turn it is on. So okay, I will do one and four. And it. Oh, congratulations. Ah, right. Um, I need to put a break in the loop. So I'll reload this and put a break in the loop once I sunk the battleship so that I can actually so it actually works and exits the code properly once I've guessed the battleship instead of letting me guess even more so that needs to go there 7 submit so if we guess 3 and 4 congratulations you sunk my battleship and hmm what? Okay, I'm confused now. One and three. Let's do that first. Okay, it does do that. It does print which turn it is. Plus one turn. Uh, at the beginning of each iteration, print that. So, of each iteration. There. I'm confused now. One and three prints the turn 
Yes, no. Let's actually do reset code. It needs it to be there. So it needs to be just before. Yeah. I have no idea why it's not working now. Save and submit code. 3 and 2. Hmm. Let's actually get rid of this break because it might be messing with it. And let's just guess 1 and 2 all the way through to see if it's actually going to be fine now after my four guesses. I guess it is. Maybe it was that break that was doing the making the problem. So we'll want to put it under the else if that so okay. If someone runs out of guesses without winning right now, the game just exits. It would be nice to let them know why. Since we only want this game to display if the user guesses wrong on their last turn, we need to think carefully about where to put it. We'll want to put it under the else that accounts for misses. So we'll want to print the message no matter what the cause of the miss. Since our term variable starts at 0 and goes to 3, we will want to end the game when turn equals 3. So add an if statement that checks to see if the user is out of guesses. So we need to do this here. If um, turn, right? If turn, not turner, turn equals 4, then no, if turn equals 3, then tell the user that game over. Print game over. Let's see if that works. 3 and 2, 1 and 2, 4 and 3, and 1 and 1. So, yes, it prints game over. So that's correct. Let's move on. I got the badge, which you didn't even see. <laughs> A real win. Add a break under the win condition to end the loop after win. Oh, so now we need to do this, which I did without knowing. Um, so, so congratulations, you sunk my battleship and break. So save and submit code because I already have it somehow. Oh, because okay. So one and three. It should tell me. Congratulations, you sunk my battleship. Good. So next lesson. Um, to your battle stations. So now we have uh, a fully functional battleship game. Play it a couple of times and get your friends to try it out too, if you want. <laughs> Don't forget to go back and remove the debugging output that gives away the location of the battleship. And that's there. So we can just do that, simply. And you may want to take some time to clean up the document and document your code as well. So let's save and submit. Let's guess row. Try and guess the row three and two. One and four. Oh, I actually got it. <laughs> Lucky. So let's go on. Uh, so this is just telling us that you can make uh, modifications to the game and some examples are you can make multiple battleships and it's giving you hints that you need to be careful because you need to make sure that you don't place battleships on top of each other on, on the game board sorry you'll also want to make sure that you balance the size of the board with the number of ships so the game is still challenging and fun to play so you might want to expand it to 8x8 maybe you can make battleships of different sizes, you can make your game a two-player game instead of 1v AI, and you can use functions to allow your game to have more features like free matches, statistics, and more. Some of these options will be easier after we cover loops in the next lesson, which is what we're going to be doing in the next lesson, or at least starting. So, until the next lesson, Please tell me if you like this video by putting a like, 